While the mid-range and budget cards are what shift volume, enthusiasts typically fixate their sights on the bleeding edge of GPUs. The RTX 4090 and RX 7900 XTX light cards are what really shape the overall discussion and talking points of a next generation, really setting the stage. With rumours of the RTX 50, GeForce cards, as well as AMD's RDNA 4 swirling around online, it seemed that Nvidia and AMD's battle for your wallet was already starting to heat up with their respective Halo products. But then, it happened. We started to hear that N41 and 42 were canned, with only the mid and low range offerings remaining, N43 and 44. The rest were chopped by the Radeon Axe. In this video then, I want to talk to you guys about why AMD did this, how it has probably affected the plans of Nvidia as well as AMD going forward, and also reports of RDNA 5. Yes, I think that uh, it is very early to talk about this, but the rumours are already out there, and I suspect that some of this is probably controlled leaks from certain companies. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Before we get deeper into the video, I just want to say that I'm sorry for not being on camera for this particular video. Um, I'm working on some stuff in the office at the moment and things are just, well, kind of everywhere and there's going to be some stuff being rearranged and it's just not really practical to film right now, but the next day or two, next couple of videos, I will be back to normal. Well, as normal as you can expect from me and you, but I want to go over a recap quickly. Now, I will keep this really brief because I've talked about RDNA 4 and RDNA 3 and how they differ like a billion times at this point, but in very brief summary, RDNA 3 took the concepts of RDNA 2 and roughly speaking, split them into a couple of different parts. The Infinity Cache and Memory Controllers were on MCDs and the Compute Die, GCD, housed things like the shader units, ROPs, TMUs, and so on. This was true anyway for N31 and 32. However, N33 was still a monolithic configuration. For N41 and 42 though, things changed a little. Okay, a lot. It was no longer a single compute die, but this was now split into multiple dies, multiple SEDs, shader engine dies, and these could form, I believe, into a larger GCX. As I was told, and you can see on screen, this older information anyway says that there was 144 compute units being considered for the high-end configuration. Some of this information is probably not fully correct. I also was asked to not mention SEDs, which as far as I understand, with the basic building blocks of GCXs, but none of this really matters because N41 and 42 were killed, at least in this shape, possibly becoming a single GCD. Now, I was told that the single GCD iteration of N41 was up to 60 workgroup processors, that's 120 compute units, so a SNP versus 144 of what we talked about previously. However, it's not fully clear whether this happened or not. I've heard two conflicting uh, stories and narratives here. The first is that the multiple dies were killed and it became a single GCD. You can essentially think of it as N31. There were some changes, but ultimately it was quite similar in concept. However, obviously, rather than RDNA 3, it was RDNA 4. So we had new IPs, for example, ray tracing. But I've also been told that that is outright not true. And what happened was uh, N41 and 42 ceased to exist due to issues. We'll get into why in a second. Um, and when they decided that it just wasn't working and timelines were not aligning, they just canned N41 and 42 
and N43 and 44 was what they pushed forward. I don't know which option is true. I think they may have briefly considered a single GCD, um, which was up to 60 uh, workgroup processes. I think the first option is true, um, that they went, or at the very least considered, a single compute die, but I am not certain. So definitely do not take that uh, you know, with any degree of certainty. Either way, there were multiple issues which made the design impractical, especially multiple dies. And they had to basically go back to the drawing board several times, so to speak anyway. And the whole thing was just falling behind schedule. Now I've heard of numerous issues. One of them, for example, was allegedly the distributed geometry engine. Uh, this is because again, there were multiple dies and geometry is being handled across all of them. So just having the data, just everything working harmoniously is kind of a big issue. Now I was told some other specifics, however, the person who told me this also said that they would rather I keep quiet about it. The design is dead now, at least to my knowledge and what others have leaked, but I also don't want to piss in anyone's cheerio, so I'd rather not talk about it if I was asked not to. Anyway, doesn't really matter. N44 and 43 are what remain. Um, I don't have the precise die size, but I was told by one source anyway, they're going to be 100 to 160 uh, square millimeters, with the larger die possibly being a little faster than the 6750 uh, XT and raster, but of course ray tracing will be considerably faster. This means naturally that the fastest card during this time will still be the N31 based products like the 7900 XTX. Now I'd initially been told and actually said in multiple videos that I think GB100 will be used for both gaming as well as data center. Copperite 7, however, is reporting that the 200 series is used for data center. Now my sources told me that essentially plans have changed and now the 200 series cards, uh, sorry, uh, dies are gonna be used in gaming. I don't know whether this is true or not. My information could have been off but I'm leaning towards it being probably accurate because these dies will be smaller and much less expensive given they're gonna be on a TSMC 3NM process and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't have the RTX 50 specs anymore. I had put them out, at least the early ones, but obviously since we're on new dies now, I have asked around and I'm waiting to hear back from people, but I will say I think most of the architecture stuff is probably still largely correct but the specs are just totally off. So with that said, is AMD boned? Well, initially you may say yes. However, that's not really the right way to go about this because remember again, volume sales are for low and mid-range products. Strix Point and Sarlacc, I also suspect, will be pretty good. So it's gonna come down to does N43, for example, perform well at a decent price? at a decent power consumption, and if the answer to those questions is yes, I think they'll be okay. And then of course, there's also things like machine learning, and that is just a market that is absolutely exploding at the moment. Anyway, I've now heard from multiple sources that AMD have increased the resources to RDNA 5. Basically, it took the resources that were working on N41, for example, and now has shifted them. It's all hands on deck. Now, I won't lie to you guys, I think, a lot of us have hopium and copium, and I'm certainly doing a lot of huffing myself, but I do think that there is a decent chance of it being excellent. I've had one source tell me it will be their zen moment. Uh, it's certainly not the first time I've heard those words about graphics from AMD. I believe RDNA 2 was one time I heard about this same thing, but RDNA 2 did turn out to be pretty great to its credit. I don't wanna directly quote people here, but uh, in summary, RDNA 4's original vision with the multiple dies would have been decent. But with RDNA 5, AMD does have the chance to do something quite special. So they were left with this, this, this rock and a hard place decision. Does RDNA 4 get released, potentially later, and it would be okay, it would be decent, but it probably wouldn't have done amazingly, at least in the eyes of gamers and the press. Or... Do they, in the short term, take that loss, take the L, if you will, and say, no, we're going to just work on RDNA 5 for the high end and just giving it the best chance to flourish? Now, given, as we know, AMD's future roadmap is also going to be for, let's say, consoles, like, let's just be honest, 
it's unlikely the PlayStation 6 or the new Xbox are going to use NVIDIA. I mean, it's possible, and I would be interested to see in a world that that does happen, just to see what the hell, you know, that would look like, but I don't think it's going to. I think AMD have this on lock, and I think RDNA 5, RDNA 6, and so on, AMD needs to get its house in order so it can offer the best option to its semi-custom design, you know, customers, again, for example, Sony. So I think they probably did the right thing here. The question is whether AMD have the willingness to create a GPU which is large enough to compete with the bleed, uh, compete, excuse me, with Bleeding Edge, or will they stick to fighting against the, you know, 70 and 80 class cards from Nvidia? Now I have been given some specs. However, at the moment, there are a lot of changes still being considered. From one source, there are multiple RDNA 5 designs considered. The uh, biggest is 9 SEDs with 3 shader arrays, 5 workgroup processors, and 4 shader arrays and 5 workgroup processors. This comes to 135 or 180 workgroup processors total, depending on the variant. I've managed to get confirmation, quote-unquote, from one source, uh, that 135 is true, but I've received no confirmation on 180. Now, it's possible that uh, this is just a design that is being tested internally and will never release, or the other source just hasn't heard about it. I would love the 180 one to be true, but holy crap, that is a behemoth. It also seems MCDs are gone, which isn't too surprising. Basically, the IC Infinity Cache and memory controllers are now essentially part of the AID, I also got some conflicting information concerning the shader array. A source told me that there can be any configuration of shader arrays per SED, while the other tells me that no, this is not true, it's a fixed number. I don't know which of these two things are true. I also asked around a little bit for memory conf uh, configuration. Largely, I received cricket chirps. I, I guess it's GDDR7, um, but I could be wrong on that. I mean, it's possible that they could use EDO RAM for all I know. However, I did hear a few other little bits. L2 cache seems to be in each SED. This is a bit like each CPU core having its own L2, but of course, each SED is kind of its own separate unit, and this does make sense. You know, it would want its own private-ish amount of cache, like L1, L2, for latency purposes. Um, but data coherency is still a really big deal, and as far as I understand, this is being take, taken care of, excuse me, on more or memory attached last level. As I said, data coherency is a really big deal. Um, it's not just the old data is evicted and updated, but it needs to ensure that each of the chips, or should I say chiplets, and parts of the, the GPU as a whole are all being given the right task, and it's not easy. So, yeah. Um, anyway, clock targets and power consumption, I've been told 4 gigahertz is allegedly the target they're striving for. That's up from the 3.5 that uh, you may remember from RDNA, um, RDNA, uh, RDNA 4. I don't know whether they're going to hit these targets. It's way too early to know, to be honest, because they are not even slightly close to production silicon, naturally. As for power consumption, 450 watts, which is interesting because that would be almost 100 watts higher than the 7900 XTX. Naturally, this would also depend on things like the final configuration at AMD's willingness just to go balls to the wall. Um, as I said earlier, the highest configuration I've heard they're considering is 180 workgroup processors, but I'm just far from certain they'll launch it, and it will, of course, depend on the competition at the time from NVIDIA, and AMD's willingness just to take the risk. I would love for them just to go absolutely just nuts and just say, screw it, you know what? We're going to just make the highest end product possible. Will they or not? I don't know. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. It's YouTube. Hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.